All right, this video is going to be very fast. Basically, we're going to show you how to send an email with PHP um, with an attachment. Now, keep in mind for Windows users, this probably won't work for you. You'll have to post it to your server first because this will only work if mail works, and mail is only going to work on Unix servers and Mac it runs on Unix, unless you have something else in your Windows box that lets you do it. Okay? So, first thing we need is an HTML form, uh, which looks something like this. Uh, yeah. Okay, HTML form. Uh, basically, all this is is a form method post. Our action equals this this page, and we give it an encryption type that allows us to send files. And then uh, we have an input type equals file with the name attachment. That name attachment very important. Now, what we need to do is we're going to have since we're posting this page, we're going to put our PHP up here. However, we need to prevent uh, this from happening unless we actually post. So we're going to make sure that post is set and that it's not empty right there. So if if there's post, then we're going to do it. So basically, if there is post, then we're going to continue. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, next thing we have to do is if there is <clears throat> an attachment. Okay. So to check if there's an attachment, uh, to get the file, it's in the underscore files array. And the first, uh, the first index of the array is the name of the name of the file, which we called attachment. Remember that attachment. And then the name of the file is name, right? So we need to check if this value is there or not. When you post the form, it, it's going to be there, but it's going to be empty if there's nothing there. So we're just going to check that it's not empty, so we can continue like that, okay? And if it is empty, then we're just going to do echo no file posted, right? posted. So <clears throat> in that instance, now what we need to do is store a bunch of variables. So how, just like we did attachment name, there's also temp name and type. So to do that, <clears throat> we're just going to grab these variables. Uh, basically, we're going to say store some variables, right? Bam, variables. <clears throat> okay. And that's going to give us our file name, our temp name. So the name of the file is, is actually the name of the file. The temp name is some random string on your server where the file actually exists physically. And then type is the kind of the mind type of the file. So like application slash zip. Now the next thing we need to do is actually get the extension of the file. To do that, you do something like this. Basically, uh, we use the base name of the file, which is going to be everything after the last slash. And then we kind of do some string cutting to get the last four. Now the reason we're doing the last four it's because we can do, because docx really is the reason I'm doing it. Docx and jpeg exist. They're four characters. So when we, we're going to basically search for those. So you're going to search for dot doc. We're going to search for dot pdf. Again, these are all four. They're going to search for docx with no dot. And then we're going to search for jpeg if you want to do that. Again, the most we're going to search for is four. Again, we're going to use that dot, you know, because we have to adjust for four or three. Instead of having to do two different ones, we're going to do it like that. So we're going to create an array of our allowed extensions, right? Just like that. So our allowed extensions is an array, doc, docx, pdf, zip, and png. Now remember, the docx does not have a dot, because then that would be 5. So we actually have to do that check. Um, basically, we're going to use the in array function to do that. So if, if in array, extension, allowed extensions, then continue. If it's not in the array, then we're going to spit back and say echo um, file type not allowed. Okay, that's how we're going to do that. Now, what we need to do is, if it's in the array, so now we're moving on, uh, basically we need our mail essentials. Our mail essentials include our from, our message, our to, and all that stuff. Okay, so our from is going to be our posted email, our to is going to be my mobile me address, our subject is going to be something random, and our message is also going to be something random. That can be HTML if you want it to be. Now, uh, we need a couple things. I'm going to use the word file and store that as the temp name instead of what we had before. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is just because uh, it makes more sense than calling it temp because it's, it is temp but it's not really temp for what we're doing. So I'm just going to call this things you need. Now I'm going to have you copy and paste these but then you need to get the contents of the file. Okay, The contents of the file is chunks work we're, we're, we're basically 64 base encoded. We're, well let me start here. We're going to get the contents of the file which is 
you know, the contents of the file in string. Then we're going to 64 base encode it because that's what mail understands. And then we're going to split it into chunks. Just copy this verbatim because it works. Now, down here, we're going to get some random unique identifier because when you make an email with multiple parts, it has to be split by some random number so that the email program knows that they're separate parts. So we're going to call it unique identifier. We're just going to hash a unique time. We're going to make sure it's unique. Okay? That's all we're going to do there. Now, we're going to put our standard Eight, our standard mail headers that you've always had, bam, right here, our from, our reply to, and our mime type. Now, the, the, the bigger part is that uh, we're going to declare outright that we're going to have multiple parts, just like this. So now we're saying, okay, we're going to have multiple parts of this email. So we're going to go to our content type, multi-part mixed, and our boundary is going to be that UID, our unique identifier. Basically, what I'm saying is you need a boundary for each type. We're going to have two parts in this message. We're going to have a plain text and an attachment. So let's do the plain text part. This one's pretty simple, and you've probably seen this before if you've done HTML email. Again, we're doing this in the header. So we're going to start with our unique identifier. Our content type is going to be plain. Our encoding is going to be 7-bit, which is perfect for text. And then our, our following that is going to be our message. Again, our message messages in plain text. If you're doing HTML, you need to have HTML headers. Now the file attachment part. Let me paste this in and then I'll explain it. The attachment part, again, starts with our unique identifier, our, our boundary, are going to set our content type equal to that file type that we, that we got from the post. Our name is going to be the file name that we got from the post. Okay, so we're just using those. Then our content transfer is going to be base64. Again, we're setting it to base64 because mail programs understand base64 and we encoded it in base64 up here. Then our content disposition, we're going to say it's an attachment and our file name equals that file name that we gave it. Again, we're using file name and not temp name because we actually want the attachment to make sense. And then our header is going to be equal to that content. Again, that content is that chunked up 64 encoded contents. And that's how you do the attachment. Now the last part is we actually need to send the mail. Now this part is also a little bit trickier because normally you would put the message here. However, in this case, uh, our message, we're just going to leave blank because our message, again, is here in the plain text section. So we don't need to put it here. So we're going to do mail to our subject, blank message, and then all of our headers that we put in. Now we're going to wrap it in an if condition because we need to say if it's successful, tell us. If it's not successful, fail. Right? Save that. Refresh this page. Go ahead and send. I have a PHP problem. Uh, I'm going to pause this real quick so I can find it. Okay, so upon pulling up my error log, I see down here that I have an error on line 30. So if I go in here and I check out line 30, I see this it's this. I checked out my parentheses and they're all fine, but I noticed the line above does not have a semicolon. That's probably why. I actually haven't tested this yet, so let's see. So now we'll check out the page. There we go. Our from, let's going to say, let's do bob at bob.com. And we're going to do this. Let's uh, go ahead and do a... Uh, Let's do something that's not allowed to see if that works. All right, let's do this GIF, right? We're going to send that. Oh, file type not allowed. Okay, great. So that's working. So let's do bob at bob.com. And now let's send an allowed type. Let's do this PNG. And we're going to send. And then it says success. Okay? Now, our form is still here. We have a problem with that. We don't like that. So let's actually come down here. And after this is all done, right before the closing, we're just going to say exit, which is going to not show the form again. Let's try that one more time. Open our attachment. Okay, so that was not good. Let's make sure that that's okay to do because it does not look like it. Uh, okay, so it's outside of our realm, so we actually need to do that inside of our whether we success or fail needs to happen. Okay, let's do that again. There we go. Now our from is going to be bob2 at bob2.com. Our attachment is let's go ahead and do a different PNG. And now we're going to hit send. Now our form doesn't show up. It says success. Let's check out our mail. Here's our first one. And there's our there's our attachment that we attached was that PNG, right? So if we look at it, that was built, you know, built site, right, PNG, and there's our second email that just came in, and there's, again, our another attachment, which is that image, there we go, we have sent email, and here's our text message, right, so we've sent email with a message and an attachment through PHP.